I'm going to be going over the brand new gameplay footage for Tears of the Kingdom that was just revealed from Nintendo, as well as breaking down all the brand new abilities that were shown, as well as cover any little hidden details that you might have missed. What's good, Zelda crew? D-Rock here, and man, oh man, did we just receive one of the best gifts we could have asked for from my guy Anuma. So Monday afternoon, a totally random tweet was released from Nintendo stating that we would be getting a whopping 10 minutes worth, roughly, of Tears of the Kingdom gameplay. Did anybody predict this? If so, you and I need to go to play the lottery. I mean, let's go. <laughs> anyway, let's dive into this beautiful gameplay and break it all down. So right off the back, after my homie Anuma is done letting us know that Tears of the Kingdom is now finally finished with development, we get dropped right into the gameplay and it looks like Link is in a new or old outfit and is riding a wild horse throughout what looks like the Dueling Peaks region. First couple things I noticed right off the back here is the map. There are what looks like coordinates on the map here, which is a new thing that wasn't in Breath of the Wild, which is pretty interesting to me. Maybe that's going to help us navigate the world of Hyrule this time around. Maybe it has something to do with the different depths, like whether we are at ground level or extremely high up in the Sky Islands. Over in the top left here, it looks like if you click the L button, you will access one of the new abilities that I will explain here in a few. There are also some new enemies here, but I will talk more about them in a minute, Zelda crew. Skipping ahead a couple frames, we notice the spiral stone on the cliff here. Nothing was confirmed in this gameplay trailer as to what these are or what exactly they do, but here's to hoping we receive some new information before Tears of the Kingdom drops on May 12th. Here you will notice a rock falling from the Sky Island which Link then goes up to examine. This is where the very first brand new ability is introduced. Link is able to rewind time and basically in a nutshell reset objects to where they originally began in Tears of the Kingdom. We then see what we seen in the previous trailer with Link riding the stone back up into the sky except now we have the actual name of the ability which is called Recall. This animation looks so sick man. It does look like there is a limit to how far Link can recall certain items as shown by the blue circle that is getting lower and lower the higher up Link goes in the sky. At around 2 minutes and 41 seconds in the gameplay trailer, it sort of looks like Link has another new ability that we can use if we hit the L trigger once again. We are then introduced to a new enemy in Tears of the Kingdom which is called a Construct. From what we see, it doesn't seem like the combat has changed much or at all as Link is still performing roughly the same movements he did in Breath of the Wild. This next frame all but confirms the biggest fan theory in that the Zonai will be heavily involved in Tears of the Kingdom because we are actually able to pick up a material called a Zonai Charge from defeating the Construct enemy, which might be a rare drop much like the ancient cores in Breath of the Wild. I do want to point out here that Link does not have the Master Sword at all in this gameplay footage. Are we going to have to retrieve it again, I wonder, in Tears of the Kingdom? Anuma then shows off Link's next new ability, which is called Fuse. Based on the gameplay shown here, it looks like fusing allows Link to quite literally attach anything to either his sword or shield, and depending on what you attach, it gives the sword an increase in the attack stat as well as increases the durability of that weapon. I think it's pretty flippin' sweet how we can literally make a stick fuse with a boulder and use that as a weapon. It's genius, Nintendo. Simply genius. <laughs> this fusing ability looks to be really handy and can allow you to make a super long spear as well in order to attack enemies from a distance. It's pretty cool. Around five minutes in the gameplay trailer, it is revealed that we can fuse weapons to materials as well. You can literally fuse anything like a leaf to increase the attack stat of the arrow or even fuse white choo-choo jelly with an arrow to literally create your own ice arrows. How cool is that? Another pretty silly material you can fuse is a keys eyeball to an arrow which allows you to hit a flying enemy with what looks like 100% accuracy. Silly, yes. Efficient, most definitely. <laughs> Finally, we don't have to waste 100 arrows trying to hit objects in the sky. Not only can you fuse objects to your sword and your arrows, but you can also fuse things to your shield. Yes, you heard me right. 
In the example shown in the gameplay, Link fuses a puff shroom to his shield, and then once an enemy hits the shield, the puff shroom explodes and allows Link to basically go all chic on the enemy and disappear from the construct's field of view. Absolutely epic. I wonder what else we'll be able to use to our advantage like this in Tears of the Kingdom. And hey, listen, I will be covering all Tears of the Kingdom news as well as making guides for you once the game releases. So if you're a Zelda fan and are excited for this brand new Zelda game, remember that it's dangerous to go alone and subscribe for all things Zelda. The next brand new ability available to Link that was revealed in this gameplay is the ability called Ultra Hand. This ability allows Link to fuse multiple objects together in order to travel somewhere that was previously not reachable. The example Anuma gives us in this gameplay footage is Link fusing three logs together and adding fans on the end in order to allow Link to travel to the other side of the lake that is on one of the Sky Islands. There seems to be a limit on the fans as well, which is made pretty obvious by the battery that slowly loses life the longer the wind blows. I guess we have to have some limits, right? This is so cool to me. This shows us that as long as we are creative enough, there is literally no spot on this map we can't reach. We are then shown, in my opinion, the best new ability so far, which is called Ascend. This ability allows Link to ascend through any areas on the map that have a ceiling or something that Link can ascend through above him. This is a complete game changer, especially if you've played Breath of the Wild, as now if we want to explore a cave or even get to the highest peak in the Hebra region, for example, all we have to do is use this ability as shown in the gameplay. They do emphasize that there are some limits to this ability, but they don't really say what those limits are, which is totally understandable. Another cool thing Anuma shows us is that the enemies here on the Sky Islands can actually use the fused weapons like Link can. This is for sure going to make battling way more interesting and more intense. The last part of the trailer shows Link being attacked and being knocked off the Sky Island quite hilariously, especially with the commentary, <laughs> and falling to Hyrule below in what looks to be a pretty seamless transition. This is something I was extremely excited to see. How fluid and how seamless would the transition from the Sky Islands to the ground level be and vice versa? Would there be loading screens in order to compensate for the Switch's lack of power? Well, I got my answer here in this new gameplay for Tears of the Kingdom. It looks absolutely amazing. That dive looks awful familiar, doesn't it, Zelda crew? Now, I sure hope you didn't click off the video before it was actually over because the gameplay demonstration then ends with the final official reveal of the Tears of the Kingdom themed OLED Switch that was rumored, a pro controller, as well as a carrying case for the OLED Switch itself. The OLED Switch Tears of the Kingdom edition starts its sale on April 28th of this year, and the Pro Controller and OLED Switch carrying case are available on May 12th, the same day the actual game, Tears of the Kingdom, is released. I just hope I can get my hands on these before the scalpers get them. If you know, you know. Looks like I'm going to need to start saving up some of that ad revenue that I'm getting because, man, I want all of this. It looks so good. It'd be such an amazing collectible. And this is the reason why I haven't upgraded my OG Switch system because of this OLED Switch potentially being announced. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Super pumped. One of Link's most iconic items in the Legend of Zelda series is a total waste of time in my opinion, so be sure to check this Zelda video next to find out exactly what I'm referring to. Much peace and love. Be the light. Let's continue the Zelda conversation right here.